You came, you disliked, and then you left. But I listened. Hey friendos, it's DW here. So today's video is a response to uh, the vlog that I did previously. More specifically, I noticed that the views were really up from that video, but the but people were leaving immediately after the C Sharp experiment. And on top of that, I noticed a lot of the people that were coming to the video fresh were coming because they were searching out Godot. And I got a couple of dislikes over the video because I never really did finish up that conclusion or finish up that experiment. I kind of said, I just can't get it to work, so I'm going to let it go. And that always bugged me internally, but I kind of let it go for the sake of it. But seeing the audience react in kind of the same way, going, ugh, he just didn't finish it. That's how I've interpreted it, at least. Made me want to go back and finish it up. And so that's what I did. Over the long weekend, I've, I've tied up a couple things, got my C-sharp debug environment working. Uh, I've got a couple tutorials that I followed uh, in, in the description below to make that possible. And then uh, I actually did some experimentation, got the external libraries working. And that's what I wanna share with you today um, are the two different ways you can get this to work with. One, through the NuGet package manager for .NET or two, uh, doing it locally in your project. And so without further ado, let's get into the code. So what we have here is a C-sharp Godot project or a Godot project that's gonna use C-sharp for scripting. And we're going to use Visual Studio Code to do the debugging and code editing. And I'll just say, set up a really basic project following those two tutorials that I referenced uh, previously. And if I actually open up this icon script, you can see it's pretty straightforward, just GD print. I'm just running a basic debug command, and, and that's great. Now, the next thing we want to do is actually use an external library inside of our script, just an external C Sharp library. Now, there's two ways we can add a reference in C Sharp one is through NuGet. Uh, which is the .NET package, package management system. Or the second way we can do it is by referencing a local DLL uh, that is local to our project. I'm gonna show you both of them today. Uh, I'm gonna show that with the exact same library, but my preferred version is actually NuGet. Now the reason I like NuGet is the package manager and it allows you to uh, not have to store the binary in your source control. And that means your bloat stays down and then you have to worry about versioning different DLLs and stuff like that with uh, Git or whatever you're using. It's just my preference, but it's up to you. In any case, uh, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to head over here to your project file. This is your actual build file. And I've actually wired, set it up here so I have a little section here. So if I unzoom, you can see here, uh, if I scroll through it all, it's, just, it's a big bunch of XML. No big deal. But down here, this item group, you can see there's a bunch of references already in here. And these references are what we're going to enhance with our own references. So in our case, uh, we're going to pick out a library. I'm going to pick the most common library I could think of. If you go to NuGet.org, uh, this is the package man public package management website for, for NuGet. And you can go through all the different packages that are available. And the one I'm going to pick is this NewtonSoft.json. It's a JSON utility library for serialization, deserialization, a whole bunch of stuff. It's been around for a long time. And it actually will show you how to add uh, this to your different projects through different means. In our case, we want to use the package reference method here. So you can click on the tab here. It gives you this line of XML, which is perfect because we're dealing with an XML file. So I copy that over. We're going to drop it in, save. And you can already see Visual Studio Code is reacting, saying, hey, you've got some stuff you got to restore, which is perfect. Now, here's the catch. What's going to happen here is I'm going to try to build this. And if I go to the output, it actually throws an error. So you can ignore that first one there, but build exceptions. So attribute version is not known on node package reference, which is kind of weird. Like why didn't VS code catch that as well? If it ran, if it, if it's uh, doing its thing. Well, it's actually, I did some digging into this error. This is my first error that I hit. And it turns out this isn't a .NET issue, but rather a Godot problem. Uh, it's documented in the latest version of the Godot documentation. And all we have to do is make, uh, to solve this, the workaround for it is to make our XML a little bit more verbose than we probably would want to make it normally. So all we do is we take that attribute, give it its own XML node, no big deal. Save that. This is completely valid. It's actually equivalent XML as far as I know. And now we have our reference to do this. And I go over to 
dough, run the build again. No error, well that error is still there. We can actually run it this time. Bam, and you can see our little message down at the bottom here, hello from C Sharp. So we're actually doing some work here. Let's close that down. Now the next thing we wanna do is actually use this thing, and that's actually pretty straightforward. The first thing we actually have to do though is we have to restore the packages. So we can either click this restore button in, uh, in Visual Studio Code, or we can open up our terminal. I'll zoom in on this a little bit. And here, if you have a NuGet installed, you can do NuGet restore from the root of the um, project. When you run that, it does its thing. You can see it gets the config files and it gets everything up to date, pull stuff down. And now, if everything worked well, should be able to refer to this in our file. So we do using, you can see it actually shows up in our, um, it actually shows up in our uh, IntelliSense here. So newtonsoft.json, and we're already starting to work. So let's actually use this thing. And what we'll do is I have my little demo class, just for, for transparency, I'll show you what it is. There's a little class that holds a couple of strings, just something simple for us to, uh, something simple for us to serialize. And that's kind of the most basic thing we can do with, with uh, this JSON, with uh, the Newtonsoft JSON library. So let's instantiate a, a demo class, like so. And I'm gonna do it kind of funny. Put my first name in there, last name in there. And now we are going to serialize that string. I get a JSON string back. So do JSON, oops, JSON convert dot serialize object demo. And then I'm going to also put a formatting indented. Now this formatting enumeration here that says indented is gonna make it more readable for us. But it's also gonna allow us to, it's actually, you can see it's actually using that library. So we're getting IntelliSense, it's actually compiling, it's giving us compiler errors. And then last but not least, let's actually output this in Godot so we can see this thing like so. Great. And go back here. Let's clear our console, I'll push play. Now, if I look down here, you can see it's actually doing the serialization. There's hello from C-sharp message, and there's my uh, JSON string that's being output to the console. And so that's how you get it working with NuGet. It's pretty straightforward. I took a little bit of finesse there, but uh, it all, all seems to be working as expected. So that's really great. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually Take this uh, away from NuGet. Maybe you don't want to use NuGet, or you're not. Uh, it's not your thing. You like using local libraries, or more likely, you've got your own DLLs that you want to use in your project, and that's totally cool. So we're gonna convert our uh, existing one, our NewtonSoft uh, package reference in our project file, to use a local reference file. So first things first, I'm actually gonna steal the DLL out of our project here. Uh, we're gonna move that into a library or into something else here. So we're gonna go. Let's go copy, and I'm gonna create a new folder out here called lib. And inside of here, I'm just gonna paste. So now I have my DLL, if I zoom in on that, all I've done is I've copied the Newtonsoft DLL that was downloaded from NuGet, just so we have a reference to it. Now I've moved it into a lib directory over here. And I'm going to uh, delete that reference. And so now we know it's gone, we just have it in here. Now we go back to our C sharp, C sharp project file. So this would actually do the restore again, but we are gonna actually reference this locally. So I'm gonna delete this guy. And instead, I'm actually gonna just cut and paste some code that is already in here, because Godot is actually already doing local uh, DLL references to run the build itself. So if I, I just cut and pasted this first one for Godot sharp. And for us, we're gonna just change it up here. So JSON or newtonsoft.json. And then we are gonna just refer to our DLL that we just moved over. So that was lib slash newtonsoft.json.dll. Now if I go back to 
uh, dough. Actually, let's go back to here. Let's go back to our icon. Everything still seems to be working as expected. I'll just make a couple of changes. We'll just call this uh, first name and then we'll do last name just to show that something's changing here a little bit. Save it here and now go back to Godot. I'm going to clear our console. We'll run the build. Builds fine. Push play. And perfect, you can see here, I changed the code and it is actually working as expected. So now, instead of using NuGet, we're actually referencing the local DLL in our project. And that about wraps it up for this video. The only gotcha I have that I haven't really covered a lot in this video is where you source your DLL from. Like NuGet's a great source, but if you're doing something local or you have a custom library, you need to make sure that it's mono compatible. And I'm not .NET or mono, uh, an expert in it in those areas at all so i'm gonna learn some more about that because i'd like to compile some libraries down to actually get them referenced in my projects whether that's through nuget or through uh especially on a local on a local one if i want to reuse some libraries or recompile open source projects to make them work with godot but uh to that point that's hopefully a later video if i get some time to do it but just something to keep in mind that always make sure your dll libraries are mono compatible for what for what we're doing and that's all I got for you today. So hopefully this helps clarify some stuff for you. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And until next time, have yourselves a great day and or evening. Take care.